Today we will be using an unknown feature of layers and especially live filter layers to create knockout filter groups. Before showing the technique I will try to explain what is happening and then show a couple of examples of how it can be used. Let's start by adding an adjustment layer, in this case a curves layer. I'll adjust the curve so we can see its effect clearly. Awesome. Enabling and disabling it shows indeed a change in the image as expected. The curves adjustment is on top of the image so it applies anything below it. Now let me group it. As the group itself isn't passed through blend mode, the curves adjustment will be passed down below with as a result the image getting darker. Now comes the interesting part which I have mentioned earlier in my previous video about layers demystified. As long as the group has no content in itself, the adjustment and the filter layers will propagate down. By content I mean a layer which contains pixels, which are pixel, image and curve layers. The moment a group has content, the adjustment and the filters will be applied to the content and then it will propagate down. So when I add a circle to the group, see what happens. You notice that affinity itself gets a bit confused, but basically the curves adjustment is neutralized. Turning on and off the curves adjustment confirms this. Well, it makes sense. The layers in the group are contained to its content, in this case it is the circle we added. As the curves adjustment is below the circle, it has no effect. We can compare it with a document which only has the circle and the curves adjustment. The result will just be a white circle. The result of the group will be passed through and at the end we get a white circle on top of your image. Now here is something interesting. If I hide the circle, the curves adjustment is still not applied, the image does not get darker. But see now what happens if I remove the circle, the curves adjustment is reapplied. As we noticed, it is confusing for Affinity 2, so I will do a quick zoom in and out to force a refresh of the canvas. So we can conclude that whether a layer with content is visible or not, it is treated as content for the group and the adjustment will not propagate down. Now let's move on. Because the circle is white, I can use the multiply blend mode to make it invisible as the color white has no effect in multiply blend mode. Pretty cool. Now if I move the curves adjustment on top of it, see what happens. The effect of the curves adjustment is contained in the circle and the circle has become a knockout layer for the curves adjustment. Let's try to understand what is happening here. As the group is in pass through, the circle is blended in first with multiply, which resulted in a circular area of the image below, which is then darkened by the curves adjustment on top. Makes sense, I hope. If we move the curves adjustment below the circle, the process starts with the curves adjustment first. As the group contains content, it will be restricted to the group and as there is nothing below in the group, it just comes up with an empty result and then the circle on top. Ok, let me hide the curves adjustment and show you something which in a way doesn't make sense. I'm going to add a Gaussian filter layer below the circle in the group. Let me increase the radius quite a bit so we can clearly see its effect. Interesting, isn't it? You would presume that the live Gaussian filter would have no effect, just like with the curves adjustment. Now if I move the filter above the circle, the result is a bit different. The circle edges are also blurred which makes sense as the blur is now also being applied to the circle and we have the preserve alpha turned off, meaning the border of the circle will be blurred. So basically, this means that filter layers are never contained in a group if the group is in pass-through blend mode. Ok, let me move it below the circle again and do another experiment. Let's enable the curves adjustment below it. 
As I would expect, it has no effect. It just returns an empty layer and then the Gaussian blur goes through it and blurs the image below. But when I put the curves adjustment on top of the filter and then enable it, the Gaussian blur filter stops working. Seems like the curves adjustment does not recognize the output of the blur and overrules it with just an empty output. Personally, I would have expected it to work on the blurred image. This is important to know because in the technique I'm showing today, we cannot use adjustment layers between the filter layer and the knockout layer, which is the circle in this case. Enough theory, let's apply this in practice. I will remove the circle and add some text. To make it invisible, I will apply the white color multiply trick. Nice. The text itself disappeared, but the area of the text is blurred, which is quite nice actually, but not very readable. So I will add an outline to it from the FX panel. A small white outline will work nicely. Pretty awesome. What I like about this is that the text fill color really fits with the image. Before moving on, let me share why this technique is so useful because you might take a different path to get the same effect. The easiest route would be probably by adding a Gaussian blur and then mask it with the text. In order to get the border, you would probably need another copy of the text with no fill and only a border. Well, this does indeed end in the same result, but we have two copies of the text and if I change the text, I need to change it on two places. Using a linked duplicate will be able to fix that. But things get complicated quickly when I also want to have additional objects, for example, a line or a rectangle above the text. In the group with a knockout, I can just add it and the same effect is applied. Easy peasy. Now for the method where we mask out the Gaussian blur layer, things get a bit complicated as we cannot just add the rectangle on top of the existing clipping mask, which was a text. A solution would be to use knockout layers using the Erase Blend mode. For more information about that, see the link in the description. But as you can see, this requires a lot more steps. This group knockout method is much faster for quick and simple effects. One thing to keep in mind in this method, as I mentioned earlier, if you're going to apply adjustment layers, make sure they are above the knockout layers. To show you how things can go wrong, let me move the curves adjustment I created in the beginning of the video between the text and the rectangle. As the rectangle is above the adjustment, it disappears. The curves adjustment renders the text only. By the time the rectangle is going to be rendered, the blur information is removed by the curves adjustment. If I put it above the rectangle, all works as expected. So this is something to keep in mind when using this technique. Let's take a quick look at another example how we can use this. Here is a quick composition I did. And what I really like about it is the colors of the boxes. They are really in sync with the background. So let me hide the current layers and start over again. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a Gaussian Live Filter and give it quite a bit of radius. To apply our technique, I will group the Blur Filter. To get the cool box border, I'm going to add a rectangle with no fill but with white borders. After I set its Blend Mode to Multiply, I will move it to the Knockout group. It looks like that the rectangle has disappeared. Actually, the blur value is a bit too low to see the small border. So I'm going to increase the blur radius and make the border or the stroke of the rectangle thicker so we can see it much better. Now this has helped, but the border is not strong enough. The trick here is to use the color dodge blend mode. This will bring back the border in white, but if we change the stroke color to a darker gray, it creates this beautiful effect. Awesome! We can also lower or adjust the blur radius to make the box border more interesting. For quick demonstration purposes, I will also add a piece of text and apply the same steps. 
Now watch how nicely the fill of the text dynamically adjusts to the background as I move it. Pretty awesome. To wrap up this image and make it a bit more interesting, I'm going to add a line and duplicate it until it fills the box. A quick mask around them. And there we have it. Pretty easy. This effect can also be used with other filters than the blur. For example, to give you some inspiration, here is another interesting image I quickly did. I used a live perspective filter to change the perspective a bit and used the circles to knock out the perspective in an interesting way. You could then apply some adjustment on top of that to make it really stand out. Thank you for watching again. I know it was a lot of theory, but I hope you liked the video and learned something new. Until the next video.